Ah, so Tesla makes semis? How do they get their power? Like their autos, is it also electric? They certainly do, and they're also electrifying. However, there is much more to the Tesla Semis than that, so it is not all the information you need know. They might even turn into your next big source of income. This movie will teach us what sets Tesla's Semis apart from the competition and how the company is redefining the trucking business. Watch this space for further information, but in the meanwhile, hit the like and subscribe buttons to help you keep informed about Tesla by using YouTube's algorithm. Six months ago, Tesla unveiled the Semi, giving us important new information about this new class of electric cars and how Tesla's first commercial customers, like PepsiCo, are using them. We're still in the early phases of this, so keep that in mind as we examine the Tesla Semi's performance evaluation during its initial rollout in the commercial trucking sector. With its foray into this unexplored area, Tesla is entering a sector where the rules governing electric heavy transportation have not yet been established. This is something we can watch happen in real time. This is a detailed description of the Tesla Semi. Since Tesla has remained extremely discreet in 2023 regarding the specifics of the Semi truck, the majority of the information we have comes from early adopters, such as PepsiCo and its affiliate Frito-Lay. Unexpectedly, PepsiCo, a business known for its junk food products, has demonstrated a strong dedication to environmental protection and sustainability. Along with Walmart and UPS, they were among the biggest consumers of Tesla Semi in 2017 when they placed an order for a total of 100 units. In addition, they presently have 39 Volvo trucks powered by natural gas and 9 more BYD and Peterbilt electric vehicles in their commercial fleet. There are two Tesla Semi fleets operating at the moment. One is a batch that Tesla launched in April and consists of 15 trucks at the Frito-Lay plant in Modesto, California. 21 more Semis were brought to the PepsiCo bottling facility located near Sacramento. We also know some insights into practical use of these Semis. Interviews with PepsiCo Vice President of Supply Chain Michael Connell revealed that trucks out of Frito-Lay in Modesto frequently travel up to 425 miles on a single charge, usually traveling 100 miles straight to retailers. The trucks that bring Pepsi from Sacramento can occasionally go 300 to 400 miles between warehouses. Pepsi declined to comment when questioned about trying to promote the Tesla Semi's 500-mile fully loaded journey capabilities. Based on the data acquired, we can conclude that using an electric truck to transport potato chips is easier over longer distances because they are lighter than soda. Even if this finding might not be revolutionary, it is nevertheless worthwhile to investigate. Nevertheless, before concluding that the Tesla Semi is performing poorly, it's important to take a few things into account. First of all, PepsiCo is making a significant investment in a new product, so understandably, they are hesitant to push the trucks to their absolute limits right once, if at all. Currently, Tesla Semiconductor's standard nickel-cobalt-manganese battery cell is used in production. It is advised to keep the state of charge of any electric car using a lithium-ion battery with a nickel base between 10% and 90%. The battery's chemistry is stressed when it is fully charged or discharged to zero, which shortens the battery's life. PepsiCo, a company focused on maximizing return on investment, is concerned about maintaining the health of its Tesla battery packs and is careful not to overtax them. Furthermore, buffer zones must be taken into account because real-world road conditions are unpredictable and trucks may run into traffic, construction zones, or detours. These elements play a part in PepsiCo's cautious approach to operating the Tesla Semis. According to an exclusive update, the Pepsi and Frito-Lay mills are home to the only EV chargers that can accommodate the powerful Tesla Semi trucks at this time. The Pepsi operators have confirmed that Tesla Semis are not able to recharge outside of their current location. Amazingly, these Tesla Semis have a large 1,000 kWh battery pack and the 750 kWh of electricity that the Tesla giant chargers can give is rather astounding for recharging. Expert truck drivers themselves claim that this charging arrangement can charge a Tesla Semi from almost empty to 70% capacity in around half an hour. They say the truck can travel about 400 kilometers with 70% charge.
It's crucial to remember that these are truckers' experiences from an interview they gave to Motor Trend reporters in the parking lot, not official Tesla stats. Unofficial sources also provide some fascinating information. One such source is a Reddit member who got the chance to look inside a Tesla semi-truck that was branded with the Pepsi logo. They included images of the truck display, which revealed a 374-mile range in their April article. Sadly, there was no way to see the battery percentage. In order to set the scene, the truck's displayed navigation map showed that it was roughly 25 miles from the Pepsi bottling plant. Given that the vehicle had a 400-mile range and had left with a 70% charge, the stated range matches the actual distance traveled exactly. Although the precise cost of Tesla's long-range semi-truck is still undisclosed, we have learned that Pepsi was able to obtain substantial government support for their Tesla semis. Pepsi was awarded a whopping $15 million in state and local funds to help finance the purchase of Tesla semiconductors and the necessary infrastructure for charging them, according to a Yahoo story. They also got an additional $40,000 for each car through the federal government's Inflation Reduction Act. This indicates that different financial incentives make the cost of these trucks negligible, at least in California. It's interesting to note that the Sacramento Metropolitan Air Quality Management District was involved in a big way, providing a generous $4.5 million grant to subsidize 18 of the 21 trucks, or about $250,000 per Tesla Semi. In light of recent developments in the electric car market, such as the financial results of Lucid and Rivian, and the production difficulties Fisker encountered because of software problems, Tesla's move to deliberately lower pricing demonstrates its operational efficiency and durability. The dissatisfaction of people who moved to Tesla prior to these price reductions might be understood, but it's important to take into account the events of the last two years, which included a shortage of semiconductors, revolutionary developments in lithium technology, and notable changes in market output. Notwithstanding these obstacles, Tesla maintains its overwhelming 60% market share and leads the EV industry. Being a committed Tesla investor, you can't help but be upbeat about the company's future. It's important to remember, though, that the market continues to provide a variety of other interesting long-term investing options. There have reportedly been multiple Tesla semi-malfunctions, raising questions about the product's dependability. After six months of continuous use, eight reports of Tesla semis being towed or being stuck on the side of the road were made. However, rather than being a result of mechanical issues, the problem appears to be due to software bugs. There have been display screen issues reported by truck drivers, such as flickering or even total shutdowns. The touchscreen is essential for managing a number of car functions, including using external cameras to monitor blind areas. As a result, when faced with such problems, drivers fear and frequently pull over, which leads to the towing of their cars to a Tesla facility that is kept a secret in California. It is not a dire scenario, but it is also not optimal. Since Tesla is renowned for its over-the-air software updates, it is possible that these faults can be resolved quickly. Given the amount of time that has passed since the last reported sighting of stranded Tesla Semis, it seems likely that Tesla has already addressed the problem. Furthermore, Tesla has disclosed additional details regarding the future of the Tesla Semi in its Master Plan Part 3 white paper. A chart detailing various vehicle types, battery chemistry, pack size, and production volume is included in the white paper. Tesla classifies its big trucks as either semi-light or semi-heavy. The variation that has been the subject of discussion thus far, the semi-heavy one, has an 800 kilowatt hour pack size high nickel battery cathode. But given that Tesla wants to reduce weight and boost efficiency, some drivers are claiming that their trucks have 1000 kilowatt hour packs. This could mean that pack sizes will eventually be rounded up or reduced. However, the semi-light, Tesla's forthcoming car, is still a mystery. Notably, Tesla intends to use lithium iron phosphate, LFP battery chemistry, which is less expensive to produce than nickel, but has a lower energy density. A 500 kilowatt hour pack is anticipated for the semi-light's lower range variant. Because LFP batteries are less volatile than cathodes based on nickel, they can be fully charged and discharged without experiencing appreciable deterioration.
When the product is released, its useful range for everyday tasks may be greater than its entire range, which makes it more appealing. In terms of output volume, Elon Musk has voiced hope that Tesla will be able to produce 50,000 trucks annually by 2024. This estimate is predicated on a $3.6 billion expansion of the Tesla semi main production site, the Jaga Nevada factory. There are now only a few dozen semis put together at a temporary improvised factory close to Jaga Nevada. Although these forecasts are audacious, it is still unclear if they will materialize. About one-third of Pepsi's semi-order has been filled by Tesla thus far. It is unclear if the company will keep growing its fleet or move on to another well-known client, maybe Walmart. Please give this story a thumbs up if you found it interesting. Up to encourage our content and aid in expanding our audience. Remember to sign up for Tesla Stock News. We appreciate your time and we'll see you in the upcoming video.